Now let's end with the uh, kind of bizarre concept that the non-coding DNA that you have actually regulates the coding DNA. The, the random, like why is this DNA even here DNA tells the DNA that codes for proteins what to do. And the more non-coding DNA you have, the more complicated a critter you become. So if you look at, for example, chimpanzees and humans, we share 98% of our DNA. 98% of our DNA is identical. But that 2% that's different regulates the rest of it and makes us, you know, I mean, we're different. We're, we're definitely more similar to each other than we are to, you know, a starfish. I mean, a sea star. But the point is that that non-regulating or that non-coding DNA can, can tell everybody what to do and get a great diversity of stuff. And where we used to call it junk, we now realize that the more of it you have, the more non-coding DNA you have, the more complicated you are. Look at a prokaryote, a bacterium and they only have 10% of their DNA that doesn't code for proteins. And a yeast has what it looks like 30% that doesn't code for proteins. And look at, there's our mustard plant and our roundworm and our fruit fly and our mouse. And here we are with 98% of our DNA that doesn't code for anything. I'm telling you this only because it's really important to understand that all of these molecular processes that we looked at, while they might seem super complicated and crazy, they're nothing. They do not even begin to scratch the surface of tr like what is actually happening in this little system here. We are incredibly complex. Genetics, molecular genetics is an unbelievable field. All right. I think after you watch this lecture, you're going to have an exam, so peace.